Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to add this lovely applied eye cord edging onto a knitted project. This is great for finishing off and tidying up any edges of your knitted work and it's just a really great way of adding stability to any knitted project. In this video I'm going to show you how to work the straight sections of the eye cord edge, I'm going to show you how to turn a corner and I'm going to show you how to graft it closed so that you get a nice neat join. It does help if you already know how to knit the basic eye cord. If you don't, I would suggest you take a look at my video for that, which I'll link up at the top, and then come back to this after you have grasped the concept of knitting an eye cord on its own, because it really does help understand what we are doing in this project here. Now, to knit your applied eye cord edge, you are going to need two double pointed needles you can use circular needles if you want but you cannot use straight needles that have the stoppers on the end you do have to have a point at each end you're going to need some embroidery scissors and you're going to need a tapestry needle for grafting that end at the end so without further ado grab your needles grab some yarn and let's get knitting when you knit your applied eye cord edge you want to have the wrong side of your work facing you the opposite side to the side that you work with the eye cord actually looks neater and better than working with the stitches facing you so you want to have the wrong side of your work facing you um, and trust the process the other opposite side does look the best now i find with an applied eye cord edge you really only want to work a three or four stitch eye cord anything more than that and it just doesn't work the way that you would want it to do so using the long tail cast on method you want to get the yarn you're planning to make your eye cord edge with and you want to cast on either three or four stitches. For today I'm going to cast on three, I'm just going to have a three stitch eye cord edge. So you want to cast on your three stitches and then pick a point on your work where you are going to join your yarn. You can join on a corner, it makes grafting the ends closed a little bit more complicated so I pick a section slightly up from the edge so that when I turn my final corner I've got a little bit of eye cord to knit before I then graft the ends closed. So we have our three stitches on our needle and now we obviously need to attach our work to our main body of our project and you want to either choose to put your needle in between where the bump dip is or above a bump hump. Once you've chosen where you are putting your stitches along this long edge, always stick in that place. So if you choose that you're going to put your needle in here, always work into the dips. If you choose that you're going to put your needle above a bump, always work above the bumps. So what we are now going to do is we are going to pick up one extra stitch. So pop your needle in to your desired place wrap your yarn around your needle and pick up that extra stitch. And then just like with an eye cord, you want to slide your needle down so that your stitches move to the wrong end of your needle if it's in your right hand, and you want to move that needle over into your left hand. So we are still working a three stitch eye cord even though we have four stitches on our needles. So we want to knit the first two stitches. And then the last two stitches, what you actually want to do is you want to knit them together, two together, through the back loops. So you put your right hand needle into your stitches as if to purl, but pick up your yarn knitwise through the back loops, like that. And you are decreasing two stitches into one. And then because we've now only got three stitches left on our needles, we want to go into the next available gap, either in a hump or a dip like we decided, and we want to pick up that fourth stitch. Slide your needle to the opposite end and move your needle from your right hand to your left hand. We never turn our work when we are working an eye cord. So when you knit your first stitch, your yarn will be at the fourth stitch. It won't be in the place that you would normally expect it. So again, we're going to knit the first two stitches. And then we are going to knit two together through the back loops. So pop your needle in from right to left and then pick up your yarn and knit those two stitches together. 
and you do that same thing all the way along until you approach a corner. So you're picking up a stitch, sliding your needle to the end, knitting two stitches normally, and then knitting two together through the back loops. Then you pick up your next stitch, slide your needle so that your stitches move to the opposite end, pop that needle into your left hand and start the process all over again. So I will now work round until I get to a corner. If you do the same, and I will meet you when we get to the corner. I've now worked all the way up to the corner and you can see the I-cord is coming along nicely and if I turn my work, this is the right side of my work facing me and you can see how neat and tidy this I-cord is starting to look. Now we want to work our corner. So we've worked all the way along, one stitch in each stitch, all the way along and now we are at our corner point. So you want to now work three sets of stitches into the same place. So still the same as normal, but we're going to go into the same place three times in a row. So we've picked up our stitch. We'll knit two and then knit two together through the back loops. Then you want to go back into the same place and pick up another stitch. That's two. Repeat that knit two, knit two together. And then one more time back into that same place. Pick up that third stitch. And then work your knit two, knit two together. By working those three stitches into the same place, you will find that you have turned your corner and it stops your work from curling up and it gives you a nice corner once you get going. Now, when you're working up your short edges, you want to pick up your stitches from in between your rows. So we're going to pop our needle. You can see there's a little V here. We want to pop our needle underneath that little V and pick up a stitch. And then just as we did on the long sides, we are going to knit to the first two stitches and then knit two together through the back loops. So when you are working along an edge where you're parallel with your rows of stitches, you want to pick up one for each stitch. And when you are working along where you are coming into the sides of your rows, you want to pick up a stitch from in between each row. So once more, you want to find the gap between the two rows. It's like two little legs, pick up a stitch and then carry on working all the way along until you get to this corner. Again, you would work three sets into the same place to turn your corner and you would do that all the way around until you get to here. I'll go away and work all the way around and then I'm going to show you how we can graft this closed so that the join is really not very visible at all. I've now worked all the way around my work and I'm back where I started and I've just finished my last knit two together through the back loops and now what we want to do is to graft the ends closed so that we end up with a seamless or almost seamless piece of I-cord. At this point you can break your yarn. You want to leave a sensible tail about 20-25 centimetres long so that you have enough yarn to sew in your ends and you want to thread your tapestry needle. Now as with all I-cords our yarn is actually at the wrong end of our work. So we want our yarn to be over here because we want to sew in from right to left. So what I do here is I thread my yarn underneath the actual work. So through the main body of the work and up into the stitch from underneath. You might find it easier to pull your yarn through first. And then you want to pop your needle in from underneath the stitch 
and up into that stitch. Don't pull too tight because you will over tighten this last stitch here. At this point you can slip the needle off that stitch because it's not going to go anywhere because it's got this yarn running through it. Then if you remember we have worked a three stitch I cord so we have one, two, three stitches across our I cord and we they are formed in like little V's. So we want to find the first one of those which is here and you want to thread your needle through that V. And pull. Then you want to pop your needle from top to bottom back into the same stitch we've just come from. What you should have now is a small V forming. Then you want to go into the next stitch that's on our needles from underneath and pull your yarn from underneath over to the top and then you can slip that second stitch off your needle. Then we need to find the second V. So there's our first one, you can see the yarn coming out of it there and the second one is there. And you want to again go through the V with your yarn and pull. You can already see there it's starting to close up. Then just like we did with the first stitch, we want to go back into the stitch we just came from, from above. And into the last stitch from underneath. And once you've gone into that last stitch from underneath, you can take your needle away. You don't need that anymore. So we are coming from underneath the last stitch. And then we want to find the very last of our three V's, which is here. Thread our yarn through. And pull. And at this point, you can just tweak your stitches to make sure that the tension is how you want. And then we are going to go back down into that same stitch that we have just come from. And there you can see it's nice and neatly grafted. The more you do these, the more even they look. And then you would just go ahead and sew in your ends as normal. The beauty with I-cord is that you can um, thread it into your work and then just thread it down the inside of the I-cord to hide it. So sew in your end and then thread it down the inside of the I-cord to hide the end. Pull it out at point on the I-cord. And that's the end hidden in and you can do the same with this end as well and if we turn it over onto the right side you can see that we have a lovely nice neat eye cord edge i really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you have i'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and i'll see you again for another video soon bye